So you, you, based on that, you based in the role that environmental NGOs has had in promoting the end of plastic pollution, how do you think that role it could be strengthened now when we are moving into a treaty? So, so what are that level of contribution? What is that level of contribution that environmental NGOs could bring to this process? Yes, um, thank you, Manuel. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me uh, in this panel. Um, I'm, I'm Yudis Mawati. I'm from Nexus Tree Foundation, Nexus for Health, Environment and Development, uh, Indonesia. And I'm affiliated to IPEN, um, a global network, and also uh, Break Free from Plastic. Um, so for uh, this... Uh, your question uh, made me think about uh, a couple of things. First, um, plastic is a marriage of carbon and chemicals. And I believe our panelists here can attest that too. Um, that's why we uh, have, um, um, we've seen the productions of plastics, but also the growing of, um, a chemical uh, petro and petrochemical industry. So 99, over 99% of the plastics uh, production is made out of uh, carbon and fossil fuel. And that's also contain a lot of uh, harmful chemicals that um, some of them maybe we don't recognize it. Um, the second, uh, at the end of life of the products or plastics, um, we were told that plastic can be recycled, but in the last 50 years, uh, data showed that only 9% of plastics have been recycled globally. So, um, so this um, made me think about the third item, uh, the third point that come to my mind, that um, chemicals used in products are not easily recognized or identified by consumers. So when it's recycled, we don't know what kind of chemicals being recycled as well. So um, this is also what I've seen uh, on the ground that a lot of plastics that uh, exported to developing countries was supposed to be recycled. But um, on the ground, I've seen different situations, um, probably half of the exported waste being burned by the communities because it was it has no values or it has no um, um, cannot be recycled so no brokers wants to buy it from them um, our findings uh, in indonesia and also in several countries uh, shows that these toxic chemicals also accumulated in food chains for instance in indonesia we found um, in chicken eggs around the dumping site containing dioxins, um, the highest, the second highest after a village in Vietnam that was affected by Agent Orange during the Vietnam War. So these kind of chemicals are um, spread out even more because it's, it's unknown. And when it's down to uh, recyclers like um, uh, Solida here, uh, Solida here and her friends, it's affecting also their health and, and the communities around it. Um, so we found also in other uh, studies that we collected more samples, um, kitchen utensils, uh, children's toys, that's also containing a lot of harmful chemicals. So uh, in short, what we are going to do in this uh, forum or uh, contribute to the next 40 uh, to 2040 is we keep doing what we are doing, uh, collecting samples, empowering civil society, informing publics and our policy makers uh, that um, the impact of, of plastics and it cannot be recycled without reading off the toxic chemicals. So non-toxic uh, circular economy, that's what we would like to see. Thank you for your, Thank you. Um, Thank you for your points. Let me turn it over to Eileen from EcoWaste. Now, Eileen, um, in EcoWaste you've done a lot of work on labeling and standards and we heard Jody just talk about you know using uh, products uh, to 
help towards behavior change to provide information through the labels, etc. You've also worked on, you know, sort of zero advocating for zero waste solutions and chemical control. And finally, what was came out in the the earlier point uh, earlier panel was also the transboundary context, right? So on regional waste trade, you've also done some work on it. So from your perspective, and given the areas of focus, what do you feel you will bring to this treaty? Um, yes, no? um, I came from a middle um, income country in Asia. And um, um, our country has uh, are always been uh, bombarded. And uh, there's a tremendous um, production of plastic importation and uh, as well as um, consumption and disposal. And this pattern has paved way to the rise of quick fix and false solutions that, um, that um, is being um, um, peddled as recycling. Okay, so um, not just as a solid plastic, not just as also a solid waste management issue, but also um, a chemical hazards because uh, we have lots of testings that we have done that uh, from from recycled products that has toxic plasticizers that uh, that are endocrine disrupting chemicals. No, some has bisphenol A, some has heavy metal, some had cadmium, and others have phthalates. All um, designed for new products and labeled as made from recycled plastics. Oh, even the Rubik's Cube that maybe some of your children already have, beware, they have brominated flame retardants. And, and, and these are, are what, what we are been talking about. No? Um, they haven't had any labeling on it, and the manufacturers are not um, accountable for it. Um, that is the, um, uh, the, 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 the falsehood of recycling. No? Um, but then, seems like it is not enough. Our country has been um, uh, dumped with plastic designed as recyclable plastics so uh, again it's not um, it is not it's not really good no so um what i would be do will be um, um contributing to this uh, treaty is is we intend to contribute no we um to the treaty development processes we are the living evidence we are the living voice um, our, our people are, are the ones suffering from, from all of these um, recycled uh, plastics that we had, from all this waste trade of um, these guys as recyclable plastics. No? So um, what we will be bringing in this is the um, essential data, scientific um, and critical insights, not just from the ground, but also from all the studies that we have conducted, um, evidence-based, and uh, the concrete recommendations that will help address the real source, the real um, um, meaning, definition of plastic pollution. Um, that would, uh, what, what action could we contribute also is to provide and demonstrate there are viable solutions, genuine solutions and not for quick fix solutions to this problem. Um, um, and then not, not focus on, on greenwashing or, or short-sighted uh, um, rem remediations, no? Um, remediations and solutions that will not um, affect the health and the environment of our people.